On tonight's show, we have actor and filmmaker Dejour Ashwood. And now for your host, Cool Car. <laughs> Welcome to the third episode of Kicking It with Cool Car. Um, if you're not familiar with that little phrase I just did, that's a phrase that was made very famous by the legend John Witherspoon, late great John Witherspoon, man. God rest his soul. A little, little while ago, untimely death. Um, and if you don't know who John Witherspoon is, that's Pops from Friday. I know you know that. It's a legend in the hood. And uh, Pops from the Wayans Brothers, but a lot of different things. And um, great comedic, uh, com- comedic figure, great actor, man. And it's fitting. For today, because I have an actor, I have an entrepreneur, I have a filmmaker coming on the show to drop some tips, drop some knowledge. Like I said, transparency on this show. I want to bring you some value, and that's what I'm going to do tonight with this guy. But before we do that, let's have a moment of silence for John Witherspoon. All right. Had to do that. Had to do that. Um, but yeah, so for those just tuning in for the very first time, this show, Kicking It Cool Card, you come to kick it with me to get truth, to get facts. In this day and age with Facebook and Instagram, everybody wants to show you the end point, their success. And a lot of people on, are online lying about their success as well. But those who are less fortunate at the time, uh, and, and when, when we talk about less fortunate, we're talking about knowledge. They don't know how to get to where you're, you're showing that you are, allegedly. Uh, but there's a lot of gatekeepers and they, they want to sell you stuff. And yes, information can be sold and that's how people can make a living. But there are things that you can help people with along the way that, you know, it's not going to cost you anything or you don't have to really charge them for it. So I like to bring people on my show, ask them some hard questions, stuff that they normally would charge for. And hopefully they'll give you that information, drop some nuggets. And I know they're not going to give you everything, but that's what I'm here for to dig, 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 dig. So let's get into this. Deja Ashwood, like I said, an actor filmmaker, entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. This guy has so many gigs. I'm telling you, man, the man just quit his nine to five. He's doing it on his own. He got as many gigs as he has fingers. All right. So we're going to bring him in with a warm welcome. And the only way to bring in an actor is to show his work. Let's show some work. (laughs) Yeah. There's your... Hey man, hey, what's sir? up? What's up? Go back to work right, right there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff right there. Valor, Valor, man. That's yes, good sir. stuff right there. Love yes, that show. Sir. That's the big time right there, man. Network. Network TV. That's right. CW showed me love. <laughs> you know, it was a blessing to be on that show. I was Daoud. Man, that was a that was a beautiful moment, man. It's definitely a beautiful moment. That was that was definitely, um, that series showed me what it meant to be an actor when I got that check. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, man. That, yes. that was a big, that was a big deal for you, man. I remember, I remember when you booked that and you were getting ready, yeah. man. And, um, it was intense for you, but it was, uh, it was liberating. It was liberating. Yeah, I... So that was your reoccurring joint right there. And, um, mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was something big to take on because you had to speak in a dialect that you were not really familiar with, yeah. right? Yeah. But yep. but as an actor, you got to be prepared. And you're prepared. You delivered. Absolutely. How many episodes Absolutely. they give you on that joint? I was on there for five episodes. Oh, it was great. Man. That's beautiful. It was That's a, love. Great. Yeah, yeah, it was a blessing. And being on, being, having a recovery role versus just like being a day player, it's a very big difference. The treatment is real different. And you also get the wonderful opportunity to really bond with the cast. And I took, I took, I was very humble on that set. I learned a lot of jewels. Mm-hmm. I just was just really a lot of times when I wasn't on, when I wasn't on camera, I was sitting behind the scenes and really just like soaking up, you know, the environment and seeing how the, the, the really seasoned actors or, you know, uh, the lead actors performed. Right. And it was just out. Dang, man. Yeah. I remember, man. I remember you coming in and telling us, cause we're going to get into the classes and everything, but if for you guys that don't know, I'm an actor, and I go to class with this guy. This guy runs a class. Um, great, man. It's a class full of working actors, and we just feed off each other, man. 
We show love to each other. We don't tear nobody down. It's all good, but we'll get into that. Um, now, you know I brought you on here to ask you the questions that you normally charge for. Because I know you're, you're a hustling man. <laughs> hey, bless, bless it. If I had a second name, it would be Hustle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, but I want to get some information out of you for everybody that's watching who may be aspiring to act or may be starting out acting, haven't really gotten there to the stage of, you know, having an agent or having a manager. Because I know you have both, right? Yeah, I do. Yep. I have an agent in Atlanta, manager in LA. Yeah. So if they're not there yet and they're like looking at you and like, man, or looking at anybody who's on the screen, it's like, man, how can I just get an agent or how can I just get an audition? How do I even find out about auditions? What can you say to them to kind of lead them in the right direction and just give them something that they haven't heard? Because everybody's going to give them a cliche answer. Hey, go to the agent's website and upload your picture. There's other ways to get an agent. Um, finding out about auditions, extra work, speak on that. And speak on the importance of extra work when you're just starting out. Go to the agency website and, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you have to do is you want, if you want to be considered a serious actor, you want to make sure that you first have your head shots. You need, your, you need what I call an actor's kit. I mean, it's not rocket science, but you get an actor's headshot. The next thing that you want to do is you want to get a reel. And a reel is anywhere from one to two minutes. It's, it's a couple of clips of your work. They need to see 15 seconds, 20 seconds of you acting. All right. So that way they can quickly make their decision and assessment of taking you on. OK, now I'm going to address all those. Things. And then third, you need a cover letter. You can simply go online. Google is your friend. These are all the things that I did when I didn't have an agent. Is that I went and I found the headshot photographer, a headshot photographer, not landscape, not a, a lifestyle photographer, but a headshot photographer, not your friend. Okay. <laughs> but go out and get a professional headshot photographer because the headshot is your calling card. The next thing is going, finding somebody to do reels. Now, in the, uh, the notes, maybe. And under the notes of this uh, episode, Eric may uh, give me the luxury of putting some of my, my tags in there. I do both. I take headshots and I also do reels for actors who don't have any footage. But it's very easy to go out there and you get footage. Once you have the footage, you know, one minute reel, once you have your headshots and once you have a cover letter, then you go online and you look for these agents and you submit. It starts right there. And guess what? After three or four months, if you don't, ha you don't hear anything, Switch up your headshots, email them again, you know, or mail them again, because it's about timing in this industry. Everything is about timing. Yes, indeed. And I got your little flyer up on the screen right now. I know you can't see it, but they can see it. Demo reels, drama, comedy. This man writes it. Okay. He films it and he edits it. And you'll have it back in like 24 to 48 hours. And it's inexpensive, very inexpensive. And it's key. Because a lot of people will come up, and I even get questions like, hey, man, I haven't done anything. So how do I make a reel? Here's your answer. This is the answer. And, you know, even if you don't use his services, this is the answer. You have to get a reel. But this man is very good at what he does. So, hey, you might want to check him out if you're in the Atlanta area and also New York. Because he spent some time in New York. That's where he's from, Harlem, you know, one of them Harlem shake Harlem. kids. <laughs> <laughs> And, right. and he's out in L.A. Um, a lot, too. So you might be able to catch up with him. And um, I'll leave all of his uh, social media tags in the description so you can catch up with him, reach out to him, subscribe to him, go follow him on Instagram, all that. Get up with him, man. He has like three, maybe four tags on Instagram, something like that. You got Mafia. Yep. You got yep. Auditions, Dejour. Yep. What else you got yep. on there? Is that it? And then I and then I have a uh, hell of a headshot. That's that's my headshot uh, thing. It's called hell of a headshot. I, I gotta add that because I didn't put that, so I gotta add that for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, all right. So okay, that's the traditional way, and that's the right way. One of the, not even gonna say one of the right way. That is the right way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Say they're submitting, they're submitting, they're submitting to these websites, and it's like a black hole because these agents are getting so many people. What's I know another way, mm -hmm. and I'll hint at it so you can go ahead and take off and run with that but getting into class 
is a yes. hell of a way to score an agent because guess what? You're going to be in class with other actors who are actually working and they, Absolutely. Make, they take a liking to you. And then what happens Absolutely. after that, Dejul? Yeah, and what happens is after that, then you get called in, they'll ask you in for audition. But you, you're absolutely right. And let me just, let's backtrack to the, to the class. That is the foundation. You have to be training. Listen, I always like to compare acting to being in a gym, right? If you want to get your weight up, you want to get your fitness up, you go to the gym. It's no different when it comes to acting. Acting class is your gym, and you need to be in it no matter what. Even if you're a seasoned actor, seasoned actors still go to the gym. They're in class. But what, what happens in class is that you befriend other actors who tell you about other classes, who tell you about other photographers, who tell you about people who do reels, who tell you about agents, and sometimes can even give you a referral. So find a class, find two or three classes, and befriend a couple of actors, and they will, you know, they'll give you the sauce, what I call. They'll give you the sauce. And we're going to get into that sauce a little, in a little bit, too. Hopefully you can drop a little, you know, just sprinkle a little bit on them. <laughs> sprinkle a little bit. Just to, you know, sit them on their way feeling good, like, okay, I got something I can put in my tool belt and work with, right? Absolutely. Um, now, for you, have you ever done theater? Yes. Okay. And, and, and we, we all know it's a different beast. Correct? Absolutely. Yep. So, so for someone who is transitioning from theater to film, what advice can you give them? Because it's, it's drastically different coming from the big stage and you're, ah, you're all big and this and that. And then you go to film when it's almost like a whisper, you know, yeah. that's an action film or you're excited or you're angry or whatever. So speak on that a little bit. There are, there are so many different rules of, of thoughts for that. And I'm going to keep it simple. Theater is obviously like this. And you're always speaking to the last person in the back of the room. Whereas film just imagine someone always being two feet away from you. Film is very personal. And it's 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 you and one other person with film versus theater where it's you and the entire room. And if you keep that in mind when you do your auditions, it's being aware, it's you know, going from being a theatrical actor, which is very kind of like external, versus being a film actor, TV film actor, which is very internal. It comes from feelings, and then you let everything else take take care of itself. Just always keep in mind, imagining that someone is two feet away from you when you're delivering dialogue and you'll be okay. So if someone's two feet away from you, you're not going to be like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? <laughs> right. More or less going to be like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? And you will nail your auditions just from that simple thing of treating it, making sure everything and every person that you talk to is just two feet away. So, and, and, um, I did mention extra work, right? Yeah, extra work, okay. And, and working actors and seasoned actors, they look back at extra work like, ah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's grueling, right? Yeah. It's grueling. You stay on set 10 hours, 12 hours, you might make 80 bucks, you know? Yeah. Um, but there's something that you can take from that. You can either wallow in the grueling, in the gruels, in the gruel, what can I say? You can wallow in the struggle mm -hmm. of being there, you get fed well on, most, yep. on, on, on some sets. You get fed well, <laughs> but you can wallow in the struggle of being there those grueling hours, or you could be a student. Yeah. Be going at that, Joe. Absolutely. <laughs> so I don't frown at extra work, you know, and I think that when you get into acting, you have to really ask yourself the question, is this a hobby or is it a career? Yeah. If it's a hobby, then you do extra work. It's fun. You get to, you know, be around a whole bunch of other individuals. You get to be on different sets. You get to meet a lot of different stars and, you know, be on the same set with them. And that's fun. And just see how everything works. It's cool. And guess what? It's not a high, de it's not a large demand as far as your time in terms of like, you know, having to audition a lot. You just get picked and it is what it is. All right. Uh, now, the downside of being an extra is that it can be very long hours. And, you know, for 80, 75 dollars, maybe even more. But, um, you know, you're going to put in a lot of time. So I was an extra and I actually was an extra once upon a time on a game. The show, the game. And I remember my extra experience. And like I said, it ain't for everybody. But I would remember being on set for about 10 hours. 
And the whole thing while I was on 17 Hours is, am I going to be seen? Am I going to be seen? And it was something in me that was like, I'm not an extra. Like, I want the camera on me. Yeah. And so, like, it, like, it's supposed to be on me. But it was my experience of being on the game that made me say, I want to be an actor. So when you do extra work, you'll know. Because if you're the type of person that's on set and you like it, you, some people don't want lines. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But if you're on the set and you're extra and you like, I don't want to guess if I'm going to be in this clip. I want to know I'm in this clip. Yeah. That's going to you going, getting an agent, getting into class. So that way you can get lines. And that's that's what it comes. And that's what I wanted. I wanted that challenge. I wanted to get an agent in. One thing led to another. And then I worked hard and bust my butt and got an agent. So um, I love it. I love it because acting is a career for me, not a hobby. Yeah. Jamie says, I'm reading the comments here. Jamie says, great tip with identifying internal versus external feelings when auditioning. Two feet at all times. Two feet of separation. <laughs> hey, Absolutely. hey, what about methods? Because, you know, you have some kids or, or young actors who are told, man, you got to follow a method or learn yeah. Stanislavski, learn Meisner, follow this person. What, what do you say to that? Is that, yeah. how do you feel about that? Do you follow a method or what, how do you get your techniques? Well, listen, I, I think that's a great question. I love that question. I actually was talking with a group of actors today about that. And here's my philosophy on that. The method that works, <laughs> the method that gets you work. That's it, right? <laughs> But if I had to go more into detail of that, it's that it's acting is a field that is very subjective. You have people that are, you know, hooked on Meisner, Stanislavski, Uta Hagen. There's so many teachers and so many methods and techniques. And that's cool. Whatever works for you, you got to find what works for you. Yeah. I'm the type of actor that I think that you should know all of the techniques and then you throw them all away. You learn them. And then when you get on set, you throw it all away and you pull cool. from different pieces to make your technique. So my technique is a combination of all the different techniques and also what I pull from different actors. Because what happens is this. You'll get a project that may call for method, may call for Meisner. You'll get another project that Meisner may not work for that particular project. Absolutely. And so, you know, and so maybe this scene... I'm, I'm pulling from Meisner. Maybe this scene I'm, I'm pulling from, you know, Adler. And so on and so forth. You have to you have to be a chameleon. When you step on stage, know which method is the one that you're going to pull from. And it's as simple as this. When you're going inside and you're going to build a house, you can't use a hammer for everything. Right. Sometimes you need a chainsaw. Sometimes you need some scissors. Sometimes you need a hammer. Sometimes you might need a crow crowbar. Whatever it is, is that you switch up. But well, those are different methods. Mm -hmm. And so that's my approach to that is that, again, what I started with, my opener was the method that works is the method that gets you work. <laughs> Don't be tied to one <laughs> method and you ain't working. <laughs> so, so let me simplify exactly what he's saying to you guys. For example, Stanislavski is all about pulling from memories and old feelings and drawing up when you were hurt you know in the past or when you were angry in the past or if you lost a loved one okay so if you're on screen or you're on set or even an audition and you got to pull up something that has never happened to you but but everybody has experienced the emotion a loss of something you might not have had somebody who died but you you know you, you had a dog that died or you witnessed something getting run over or something you can pull from that in that moment because you don't have anything else to draw from. But if you're in a scene, that's Stanislavski. Now, if you're in a scene, this is Meisner. If you're in a scene and you know what the emotion should be, but whatever's going on between you and that, that other actor, your partner, it's the feeling. It's in the moment. You're living it. Go with it. And the director more than likely won't stop you. Because Absolutely. it's you're you're living in the now, you're living in your truth. And that's Meisner. Yes. And Meisner, I've taken it all. Meisner is hard as hell. Because yes. you will leave that class feeling emotionally drained and beat up every single day because you're drawing off 
live emotion, real emotion in the moment, and it can take you in twists and turns and ups and downs, and the, your instructor's telling you, go deeper, or pull <laughs> back, or no, you know what I mean? So, so that's just, in a nutshell, kind of an example. Am I right? Absolutely, yep. So, One of those. Yeah. So take that with you. All right, now let's talk about being a business man or a business woman in the business of film and acting because it's not just for play. We're not out here playing. It's yeah. a business. Yeah. Absolutely. What are some of the things, and I'll throw one thing out there, knowing the casting directors and knowing who they are and knowing what type of films they cast or TV shows they cast and knowing them. Speak on that. Speak on some other yes. things that you should know for your craft because it is your craft. You can determine your destiny in the world of acting. You got to put in the work and you got to know what you're doing and you got to mingle and you got to whatever. But speak on that, Dijon. All right. So let's address the casting directors, first of all. Whatever city you're in, I'm going to speak for Atlanta. Let's say, for example, right? There are a trail load of casting directors in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw a couple of names out. But as an actor, you should be Googling online. You should be finding their Facebook page. You should be finding their Instagram page because of those are your future employers. Not your, not your, your, your Instagram friends, not your Facebook <laughs> friends, right? Those, those being the cast of directors or the ones that you want to favor. You want them to favor you. And so you have uh, Brian Beagle at Still Will Casting. You have Chase and, and Paris Spellstein. You have the Finn Cannons. You have Raven Drummer, right? You have Jackie Birch. You have Erica Alvo. You have Chris Redding. You have a list of people. You have Shannon Rees. You have a lot of individuals. I mean, I probably can sit here and name over 20 casting directors that cast out. You have Big Picture Casting, Jenny Rita. All these individuals are your future employers. You need to know them. You need to find them on Instagram, and you basically need to troll them, if you will. Now, because, because they need to know who you are. A lot of them, Chasing Paris Spellstein, they, they sometimes do Twitter lunches. You need to be out there. And because at the end of the day, they need to know who you are. How do they okay? find out about the Twitter lunches? You and well, you, you need a Twitter account, of course. Get a Twitter account, and and basically you can add them or follow them. And every now and then, randomly, they'll tell they'll say, "Hey, at this particular day and time, we're gonna be here, and you can show up." But that's not the only way. Also, sometimes they they will have workshops at different uh, acting classes. You'll find out when those are scheduled, and you go out and meet them. Now, the most important thing is that every casting director is different, okay? Some casting directors go out for lunch. Some casting directors don't. But just understand in this world of acting that everybody's different. This, while there are a whole bunch of rules in acting, there are no rules. And I know, and I know that's weird and strange. And, you, you know, the, you, every rule is meant to be broken. And there's so many exceptions in acting. So that's what one thing I will leave you with is that there are over 20 casting directors in Atlanta Research your casting directors, and then let's take it to being a business. You are a business, and essentially every actor is an entrepreneur. And so you are your brand, you are your product. You need to think about how, um, there's something that's called an electronic signature. The electronic signature is when I go to Google and I type in your name, what picture comes up? What information comes up about you? What's your electronic signature, okay? And I want everybody that's watching this, that if you're an actor or an aspire actor, Google yourself and see if that's the best representation of who you are. And if it's not, then you want to make sure you have your best headshot out there. You want to make sure that you have your best material out there because if somebody needs to find you. I'm going to segue into something recently that happened. I was recently cast in a feature film that is going to uh, star uh, Fredro Starr. And... I start filming in uh, first week of February. Well, the casting director found me on IMDb. He saw my reel, thought it was good enough for the role that he had in mind. He DM'd me at Instagram. Mm -hmm. He DM me at Instagram and he said, "Hey, I just got off of IMDb. Yeah, I just got off of IMDb. I saw your reel. Really like what I saw. I like you to audition for this role." Four-page audition. I received it on a Friday, four o'clock. Did my work, shut everything down, turned it over at 4 p.m. Saturday. 
And then at the end of the rest of history, I, I end up getting the role, right? But one, my electronic signature was available. Mm-hmm. He found me online. I had Instagram up. He was able to DM me and made that connection. So I'm having my actors kit all together, how I'm promoting myself. It's all together. You want to make sure that you run yourself like a business, have all those things in, in plan and together. So when someone asks you, your actor, they're going to want to see your work. Where can I find your work? It's out there. So let's get into some um, auditioning. So we got, yeah. so, so now, nowadays, because back in the day, I didn't know what a self-tape was. It was either you, because when I was living in New York, it's just you to, you go to the go see. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter yeah. working or whatever, get off work, go to the go see. Now it's a little easier. You can do it at two, three in the morning because we have something called the self-tape. Yep. There, go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah. I love, love the self-tape. So, 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 but it's, it's two different beasts. It's two different yeah. beasts. Just like theater and film. It's two different beasts. Self-taping. Give us some tips on self-taping. How should you prep for that? How do you set yourself apart? How many takes should you do before submitting? Because you can run yourself dry and run out of you. You know, you can lack emotion because you've done it so many times. Give us the number that you think that works for you and for, you know, the person who's just getting started. How many takes they should do and just be done with it. Sure. Um, some tips and tricks on how to set yourself apart. And then mm-hmm. what are some tips? on going into that room at the casting agency <laughs> and yeah, getting in yeah. front of those people where your nerves are all worked up and you can only do yeah. it one time unless they ask you to do it twice. Or yeah. unless you ask to do something different, right? Yeah, unless you ask to do something different, absolutely. So go. the wonderful world of self-tape. All right, so if you live, self-tape is this wonderful way of auditioning where, you know, you, you know of course you, you put yourself on tape and everything is electronic. Right? And there's so many advantages to that because you can do a thousand takes and and submit something and everybody can think that that's your first take. They, they, don't, they don't know. Right. Here's the thing. With self-taping, uh, it is a different element. It's different from going in, in, in person. You know, it's, it's a different beast. And the first thing that I want to say, the first jewel I want to say is that get comfortable with getting in front of a camera and, and almost doing it almost every day. You have to get comfortable with also seeing yourself on tape. Now, what I love about self-taping is that you're able to kind of see micro behavior because, you know, you look at yourself, you put something on tape and you watch it back. You start to notice that, hey, my eyes blinking. I'm doing this funny smile. I don't normally, I don't normally do. The tick. And so here's the tick. You have different ticks. Everybody <laughs> has different ticks. And when you watch yourself back, the playback, you're going to start to see that you have different things that you do nuances that you weren't aware of but when you when you watch yourself you're able to control those micro behaviors i always like to say in my class that it's not about deleting those ticks it's about controlling them right and so doing it because those ticks are your personality all right so the whole self tape thing if you live in atlanta you're probably going to be self taping 85 to probably 90 percent of the time when you audition the other 15 percent is actually going in person. Yes, 85%. So with that high percentage, it's so important to know how to professionally self-tape. So I'm going to tell you, I'm a self-tape connoisseur, and I take self-taping very serious. Acting is very um, subjective, but I'm going to say this. Think of it like this. You are competing with individuals that are A-list actors, so to speak, right? If you think of this, right? Be careful with self-taping on your phone. Yeah. yeah. That's you gotta think about That's yeah. for emergencies. That's for emergencies. I, I get it. You can't go to a self-taping place, but be careful with that. Because the thing about it is that you got to think about mic quality. You got to think about having good lighting. All those things matter. Framing. All those things matter. And to you, your tape may look good coming off of your phone. But I can tell you right now, there's no iPhone that's out that can beat this right here. <laughs> that bad boy right a there. 5D Canon will run circles around it, I'm telling you. And your your tape will look good up until the point they see mine, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> okay? So if you can do nothing else, that's cool, do the iPhone thing. 
But I'm telling you that it's good to have a professional camera because I hook a microphone up to this, a really good boom mic microphone up to this. I have studio lighting, and it's very crisp. And and that's what I'm that's what I'm competing with. When I was out in LA, the one of the things they said about self taping that I'll never forget is this: they said, "Don't give me a reason to delete you. What are some reasons that I can delete your self tape? If I can't see you, if I can't hear you." If you're off camera when you first start, oh. if you just have right, right, <laughs> the whole and, and so this is definitely a tip for self taping. I want to tell you this: I gave a I gave a, a class on this with Scott Oakley a couple of days ago when I was in Atlanta, and I said, you know, I take some actors and sometimes they like to enter or they like to exit. And think about this: when you're entering a scene, before you enter, there's a blank space, blank wall. Sometimes your tape will freeze when you submit it. If the cast and the director see a blank space, they're not going to play that to see who's the awesome actor. They're going to delete it. <laughs> yeah. You gave them a reason to delete. So actors a lot say, oh, I want to I enter the space. No, you're already there. right? Some actors, because of the slag lines, the stage direction says the actor leaves or the, the character leaves. Don't do it. Because again, at the end of the day, depending on where that thumbnail freezes, if it freezes on you leaving and nothing is there, they're going to delete your tape. So find clever ways that sometimes when they say leave, always find a reason to stay. So those are different tips. That's that's one little tip that I'm going to give you for self-taping. But I take it very serious again. And here's another nugget. I met with a casting director in New York. Uh, she was a casting director for Homeland. And she said, you can have a good actor, right? But they're not as good as in, in when it comes to auditioning or being on camera. Then you can have a person that's really good with self-taping and auditioning. But they can use some work with acting. They will probably get a job before the person that's really good with acting. They can't audition. The case in point is this. Become a really good auditioner. Mm -hmm. Become really good at self-taping. You will get many opportunities to be on set to learn how to act. That's and that's what it is. Yeah. And that's what it is. Because if you can act, you can do all method and Meisner and blah blah blah. <laughs> but when the camera's on, you don't know where to look. You're not going to get that opportunity to be on set. Yeah, because see, on set they'll work with you. They chose you, so now they're yeah. invested in you. You're going to waste their time if they have to say, you know what, we can't use this guy. We got to go recast. They don't want to do that. Time is money. So if you were good enough to get in through the audition, that's the gateway. Once you get on mm. set, they'll work with you. Yep. Because, listen, my son, he's an actor, right? It's coming up. He was on set with a guy, and it's a, it's a, it's a new movie. It's a, it hasn't come out yet, but it's a hip-hop movie, whatever. The guy got the lead role because of management, and they knew this and that. You know, it's all about who you know, whatever. But the guy never acted a day in his life, a mm. day in his life. But it was the opportunity because of the connection and the relationships. But they were already invested, got him on there. By the time the movie was done, the kid could act a little bit, you know, he could do his thing, you know. And, and that's not throwing jabs. I'm just saying, like, yeah. once you get there, they will work with you. Also, you know what? I wanted you to, Um, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I wanted you to talk about, and I wanted to start off with this too. Talk about, are you born an actor <laughs> or, is this, <laughs> or is this something that you can learn? Yeah, it that's a good question. That's a very good question. I think that, again, choose a route that acting is subjective is that some people are born with very good instincts and some people in stinks. No. So the thing about <laughs> it is that <laughs> well, some, people, some people are born you know, knowing knowing how to do certain things, and it's just naturally they're they're good. Yeah. But there will come a point that you have to know some technique. And no matter how good you are being natural and being on camera, there will come a time where you'll get a role that technique has to kick in. Right. So personality and life experiences will get you up to a certain point. And then you reach that point technique is going to have to kick in. And if you don't know that technique, you will burn on set. <laughs> you will burn. So it's important to always be training. Absolutely. 
Okay, we all go through this. You have your lull, right? You're not booking. Yeah. You might be yeah. down on yourself. You might be questioning yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, and I know that we've always talked about staying busy. Yes. And, and, and staying busy doesn't mean staying booking. We want to, but it doesn't always happen like that. So you got to keep yourself busy. And this guy, of all people, serial entrepreneur, he stays busy. He has workshops for DSLR cameras. He has video editing workshops. Don't you have a lighting workshop now? Don't you have some other workshop? Absolutely. All, all that. All that, right? All the guy has a lot of workshops. He stays busy. Let's just speak on that a little bit about what are some things that an actor can do to stay busy and be interrupted when an audition comes about. And also, I don't think you ever touched on how you can check for auditions when you don't have an agent, too. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So so I'll address that. Checking for auditions, there, there are several sites that you should be hooked into, okay? Casting networks, you should be hooked into actor access. That is the main pillar. You know, that way you can... You can submit yourself. So if you don't have an agent, you can submit yourself. Put your, upload some headshots and submit yourself. If you have IMDb Pro, you can submit through that as well. Backstage, there's a couple of things. Now, there's some that works better than others. But definitely, if you can't have anything, you want to have Actors Access. Mm -hmm. Actors Access is, I think, about $68 a year annually. It's a drop in a bucket. The other thing, let me speak on this. With with acting, there's gonna come some costs, right? And a lot of actors, it, it kind of it, it, it eats at me when they're addressing because <laughs> a lot of actors they think you gotta understand this is not a cheap field, okay? This is not the cheap a cheap field. This is not a field that you could cut corners. Every time you think about cutting a corner, you're cutting a corner of your your craft. And that's how I look at it. Some somebody will ask a question: How much would you pay for a headshot? How much would you pay for a class? How much would you pay for this? And my answer to that is that how much, however, how much it would cost, because I don't put a limit on my acting, on my talent. And I also say, how much am I worth? Now, don't get me wrong. You don't want to pay $2,000, $3,000 for a headshot. I get that. But the point is, be careful in limiting what you will pay because you're limiting, you know, your investment in yourself. It's an investment. That's what it always is. You are the business and acting is an investment. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you're an actor that's saying, Oh, I'm going to take headshots a couple of months from now, or I'm going to get my real a couple of months from now, or I'm going to eventually get in class. You are putting yourself on hold and your career on hold. Mm -hmm. If you take nothing away from this conversation, I want you guys to take this. If you're considering and jumping into acting, whatever you plan to do, give yourself a week and get it done. Acting is about being proactive. The best actors that book are the ones that are proactive. So now I'm going to use that word proactive and I'm going to go into a couple of things that I do to keep myself busy. We're going to talk about the bell curve of acting. The bell curve, a bell curve is kind of like this. It starts down, then it goes up, then it goes down, right? Okay, so here's the bell curve of acting. I don't have an agent, so I'm down here. Then I get an agent. Yay! Then I'm not getting any auditions. Oh, man. <laughs> then I start to get some auditions. Yay. But I'm not booking anything. Oh, man. Oh, snap. I just booked a one-liner. Yay. I want more auditions in bigger lines. Oh, man. Now I just booked the U5. Yay. But now I want a recurring role. Oh, man. Now I just booked the recurring role. You see? There's always going to be something new and fresh that you're going to need. Mm -hmm. So in the interim of you not booking or having your low time, create. The ABC of acting I call always be creating. And how you do that, you pick up your phone, not to audition, but maybe to shoot some film. Some film. Buy, go invest in the camera. Cameras are inexpensive now. DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras, they're inexpensive nowadays. Go out, buy yourself a camera. Get some friends together, some classmates, and start creating material. So that way, you know the expression, a quiet phone never rings. A watch phone, I'm sorry, never rings, right? So with that being said, if you start to create content, what happens is that you'll be interrupted by an audition. 
instead of waiting for that audition. Go out and create, right? Prime example, Eric is an actor. Eric has a show, right? And guess what? He may be interrupted during the show with an audition. All right, now, I hope you don't close out the show now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like your one skit. Right, Hold on. Right. I got to take this. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the beautiful thing about that is that you're always creating. And either you're, you know, you're writing something, you can create some scenes, you can create some skits, get actors to work with you. If you go to my page, you'll see I'm always working on something. Right now, I'm in New York City. Not doing necessary acting, but I'm actually at a film workshop. I always I, I encourage that. I encourage you if you're, if you're an actor, step inside and work on work as crew or start to create film. Because what happens is that the filmmaking side makes me a better actor. Learning how to direct, learning how to do camera, learning how to edit. It allows me to say, oh, this is what a director is asking of me. This is what I need to give the cameraman so that way they can have a really good edit. But what happened is that when you're just an actor, sometimes you become one dimensional because you can't see the world on the other side of the lens. And so everything I do is always in the realm and is always to feed acting. I'm not trying to be, you know, Quentin Tarantino, you know, or Scorsese. I'm not I'm not trying to be any of that. I'm going to be Dejo Ash with the actor, but I am a filmmaker to help me with the acting. So that's what I want to give you guys that that, that even if, you, if you're not an inspiring actor, even if you're an actor, yo, step your game up and start creating your own material. Skits, short films, web series. And this is what my agent in L.A., this is what she told me. She said, listen, it's no longer acceptable to just be an actor. She says, when I pitch you, I want to pitch to, hey, Dejour, yes, he's a good actor. He has footage here. He's been on this show. He's also doing a web series. So now what happens is that I'm this actor now that's coming with weight. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Hey, talk to him about, I know we're going long, but it's all good because this is good yeah. stuff. We're just going to go Absolutely. with it. Um, now nah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> you said something <laughs> that made me think about, oh, when is it, when do you know it's time to get a manager? Yes. Good question. All right. So, you know it was time to get a manager when you, you're, you're booking in different places and you're trying to decide whether you should go the film route or the TV route or the commercial route, or you're trying to create a brand for yourself that you feel that you're not doing yourself the service. But it's basically when you have a lot of activity going on and you need somebody else outside of you because you don't have that skill set to help manage you and to position you the right way. It could be a manager is going to help you in terms of like getting you in places that you may not uh, been able to get in by yourself. It's for connections. A manager also can, can sometimes act as an agent because my manager actually in LA also acts as an agent where she actually gets me auditions as well. So here's the thing. You'll know when it's time to get an agent when you have a lot of things going on it's really, really busy, and it's becoming to a point where you can't control it, and you need somebody else to help in to help you set your branding up. Now, I'm glad you asked me about the age, the manager thing. So let me share this with you. How I got my manager was through a stroke of luck and also hard work, and I like to share this story with people because it's about always being a good person. I was out in LA and I was actually creating a film. Unbeknown to me, there was some individuals in there that were actually a part of an agency. So after I finished doing my part, I started to assist them with other things. Hey, can I help you with anything? Do you need me to run to the store, get you anything? I was just being a good service because I was actually an actor on set. And when I was done, I wanted to assist the director and the, um, the editor. So anything they needed, all the other actors, they left. I was there assisting them. Hey, do you need to see this? I'll take, a, I'll take a Uber, a Lyft to get you whatever you need. So after the project was done, one of the girls comes over to me. And she says, hey, do you have a manager? I'm like, no, I don't have a manager. And she's like, hey, I'd like to introduce you to somebody. So in my mind, I'm thinking, stop blowing smoke up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, I didn't come out here for that. I came out here just, you know, to act. So 
coincidentally, I was on a show. I was on Valor, and my last episode was being shown while I was in L.A. So I actually invited her and her friend to my viewing party. Mm-hmm. They came to my viewing party on a Monday. And then she act, she already saw me act on set and saw that I was a good person. But then she now sees me in my recurring role. Right. And at that point, she said, hey, I work for an agency and uh, I'm an assistant and I'd like to get you an audition to come in and meet my manager. <clears throat> I told her really good things about you. So I said, OK, whatever. The next day, they had me come in and I'm in this building. I'm not knowing exactly what the severity of the situation is. I finally meet who's my, 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 my manager slash agent, L.A. She pulls me in the room and she said, let me tell you something. This is L.A. I see actors every day. I would not talk to you on any <laughs> other circumstance. I, I have a whole list of actors that I could call. She said, but my assistant really enjoyed you the other day and spoke very highly of you, of just being attentive and helping out. She said, you got to meet this guy. And then she said, you're a pretty good actor, too. And that's how I actually got my agent slash manager. It's from basically just being a good person and someone seeing that and bringing me in. Wow. See, I didn't even know all that. You told me a little yeah. bit, but I didn't know the full story. That's crazy. That's just yeah. hard work, man. It's, I Like, like I said work. earlier, it's, you create your own destiny when it comes to this, man. You just got to put in the work. Yeah. Got to keep working. Yeah working and it, you know you could go a whole year whole year and a half and it just ain't working but you just kind yeah. of redirect yourself redirect yourself get new headshots like you said get new headshots just do something different but just always keep moving forward always keep working days your and you always keep working i'm gonna cut to one of those skits show them a little let's get you do let's get <laughs> I love the drama, but I like to laugh. I always like to leave him laughing. Let's get yes, to sir. it. This is what he does on his free time, and he's interrupted by an audition. <laughs> Y'all check it out. The only way you're getting back to set is shut, motherfucker. <laughs> Stop shooting that old ass camera. <laughs> Love it, man. That's from my that's from my film, uh, one of my favorite films, Harlem Nights. Man. So I'm from yeah. Harlem. I'm from Harlem. Yeah. You check out his Instagram. He has a whole lot of skits on there. Yeah. Funny stuff, man. Funny stuff. Good brother. Good dude, man. Very creative. Hey, I also want to talk about um your recent uh viewing, The Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, on HBO, Regina H- King. Yeah, yeah, man. I saw you do your thing on that. Yes, <laughs> and the Oscar goes to Deja Aswood. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, claim that though. Hey, claim listen, that. I'm claiming it. Yo, hey, listen. When I shot that, that was so much fun. Two days on set. You know, I was in the I was in the uh, the makeup uh, room and chair with Regina King next to me. I met her. Phenomenal, and I had a really good time. I love the way they had parted my head with that. I had a nice little old school. <laughs> In my head, man, it was so fly. I had so much fun on that set, for real. Yeah, man, that's that's great, man, and that's a big production. That's HBO. It's HBO, and I always wanted to be on HBO, and I and I got on it, so it was got that was it. dope. And many yeah. more to come. You already know that, though. Yeah, got many more to come. I, I've been I've been blessed just to like be a part of certain things, be on Netflix, be on Amazon, be on HBO and CW and FX. Man, I I just been blessed, and so much more to come. Yes, sir. Hey, I got some trivia for you, man. Let's get it. A little film trivia. Let's see. Let me test your knowledge. Number one, what is <laughs> the highest grossing black film? You should know that. Uh, Get Out. <laughs> no, Black Panther. Oh, Black Panther. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying, I was saying Get Out a second. So let me think of Black Panther. Okay, okay, Black Panther. <laughs> black Panther. <laughs> black Panther. <laughs> Do you know how much it grows worldwide? Black Panther. I'm gonna say, you know what? It's definitely in the millions. Uh, what does it make? Let, let's try um, 850 million. Nope, wrong. And mm. 1.3 billion. Wow. Worldwide, worldwide. Yes, indeed. That's Number tough. two. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the first black person to win an Oscar? 
Um, Cicely Tyson. I don't know. I'm, I'm no, lost. I'm lost. You're close though, because they're uh, probably about the same age. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that's no shade, no shade. But seriously though, uh, Hattie McDaniel, Gone oh, with the Wind, hey, 1940. Hey. That's what's up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. But then the second person was Sidney Poitier. Sydney Poitier, yes. Yeah, 1964, Lilies of the Field. That is that is one of my See, you can be a good actor and suck at trivia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many black people in film have won Oscars? Not just actors, though. Writers, directors. Oh, yeah, I know this answer. What is it? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 32. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thirty-two. How many black people are in acting in this world of acting? <laughs> we need more. We need more. Yes, indeed, we do. Uh, what was the year that Denzel and Halle Berry won their Oscars together? And who was being honored that night? Okay. Was this for Monster Ball? Yeah. And Denzel for Training Day. Denzel for Training Day. Yeah. Yeah. It was that. That was the two thousands. Yeah. Man, 2000, I'm going to go and I'm going to say, oh, it make me feel good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> breathe, dog. Breathe. Okay. Oh, you, let got me it. you got it. You close, man. You close. I know you got it. I know you close in your head. Come on. 2002? I don't yep, know. Yep. 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 <laughs> you got one, I started right? to say four. I started to say four. I'm like, all right. When you said you got it, I'm like 2002. Yeah. That's what's 2002, up. 2002. 2002. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Arsenio oh. Hall pump. Ooh, 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 ooh. What's, your, right. what's your favorite Denzel movie? Oh, yeah. Definitely. It would it would definitely have to be Training Day. Mm. Um, That's number two for me. And I would say, I would say, um, Rick. You're going to say it. You... Ricochet. Ricochet. R Ricochet? Yeah. I like Glory. Yeah, Glory, Glory was good. Yeah, Glory was good. Glory was good. I mean, it's so it's so many because he's such a actor. But Ricochet, man, woo! I know, brilliant guy, man, brilliant guy. And then one final question for you. Let's see if you can get this. And you and I, I kind of know what you're gonna say. Who is the highest grossing black film director? Right now. Oh man. The highest grossing <laughs> film director. Yeah. Black man. Black man. Black men. Black men and women. Who's the All highest right. grossing? All right. Um, I got two people in mind, Which and I'm going to go with, and I'm going to say, is it uh, Jordan? Peele? Jordan Peele? Nope. Tyler Perry? Nope. Ooh. <laughs> you want to know? It ain't Spike. <laughs> no, it's not Spike. He comes in uh, number, I think, six. Tyler Perry's okay. number two. Okay. I don't Tyler even think Jordan. I don't even think Jordan Peele was on the list for the top ten. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't know. I might have missed him, but okay. You want to know who it is? Yes, go. M Story. Wow. Fantastic Four. He has grossed. Yes. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry was came in second, but Tim Story grossed. 943 million. Tyler Perry has grossed 939 million. Fantastic Four alone grossed 210 million. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah, I gotta, I gotta do some research because I don't I don't I don't know I don't know him like that. Uh, besides besides that. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. All it takes is one film. All it takes is one, man. All it takes that's is all, one. That's look all it at, takes look, is look at man. Black Panther. I mean, I don't know the guys that worked before Black Panther, but man. Out of yeah. here. Out of here. Hey. That's what's up. Yeah. Speaking of movies, speaking of movies, and we're gonna wrap this up, but speaking of yeah. movies, how should an actor watch film? Because an oh. actor an actor watching film shouldn't be watching it as just a spectator. Yes. Okay. I love this question. I I, I truly feel that an actor should watch a really good film at least three to five times. One time for the acting. Another time for the story. A third time 
for either the directing or the cinematography. A fourth time for either the lighting or the editing. Mm. Because each time that you watch it, I guarantee you're going to discover something for those layers because all those things play a part. And as an actor, you need to understand why did he choose that particular cut? Why did the camera move this way? Understanding camera angles, understanding lighting, understanding directing, and of course, also for the story, which starts with the story. But I think that at minimum of three times and you're watching those things for the acting, for the camera, for the directing, for the writing. Yeah, it's a lot to learn. It's a lot to yeah. learn with just watching movies, man. People always asking like, you know, I don't know, I can't, I can't afford class. I haven't been to any networking events. Well, how can I hone my skills? There you go. Yeah. You got yeah. all the material right there in front of you. You watch it every single day. You just don't know how to watch it. Yep. Watch it every day. And you know what? You should make it your business as an actor to put in your budget once a month to watch a really good film. Choose this month to do dramatic, to do a drama film. Mm -hmm. Next month, to a, you choose a different drama, a genre. It could be comedy. And analyze that film. Exactly how I said. And if you don't have enough money to, you know, um, to to go to see the film three or four times, that's understandable. You can stream it, you know, once it come out. But maybe keep all those things in mind as you're watching that film. You know, really start to break a film down. And here's the thing. I'll leave you with this. When you're able to really look at fine films that are really good, see why you enjoy it. And if you can describe why you enjoy this acting, you can then become a good actor. There it is, y'all. Nuggets, 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 nuggets. And Dejo has dropped them for you. So I hope you got a lot to take away with you on your journey. And that can help you along your way as a business person, businessman, businesswoman in the field of acting because it is a business. You have to treat it as such. It's not just for play. We're not out here playing. People are feeding their families with this business. You should be feeding your family with this business if you're serious about it, and it will come. But in time, keep doing the work, keep applying yourself, keep reading books. We didn't touch on that, but read those books too, man. Read the books. The knowledge is in there. Tips are in there, and you just have to apply it. Fill up your toolbox and go to work. Right, Deja? So, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. Really do. Spending your time giving me, giving me, giving me this hour, giving us this hour, man. But it was uh, very well. It was very well said, very well put. Everything that you said, um, it was worth the hour. Definitely. I'm putting links in the in the uh, description, all of his tags. You can go check him out on Instagram. Follow all of his pages. Get into what he's doing. He can add value to your life. I always say this show is about adding value to your life. Dejour can add value to your life. Reels, workshops, DSLR, DSLR cameras. If you have a DSLR camera and you don't know how to use it, he can teach you how to use it. He's very well versed, has multiple cameras. I'm talking about high-powered $10,000 cameras. He has them. Writing workshops, uh, cinematography workshops, editing workshops. He has the mafia. We didn't talk about that. Make a film in eight hours. Come together on a Sunday, everybody meets up, you get a get an idea, throw the ideas around, you formulate it, you go and write it, put it together, you go and film it, all in eight hours, edit it, and you present it. And you win, you win awards. It's crazy. I'm telling you, this man is busy, man. This man is busy. <laughs> really, 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 really busy. But yeah, definitely tags in the in the um in the description. Y'all make sure you subscribe to the channel. So you know when I'm back on here every Tuesday. Also, I will not be here on the 24th, which is Christmas Eve. I will not be here on the 31st, which is New Year's Eve. I'll be with my family. You guys should too. I'll be out partying or living life and enjoying it. Thanking God and all that good stuff. Until next time, y'all. Appreciate y'all tuning in. All right, Dejo, man. Appreciate you, boy. Stay safe out there. Keep working.